Hi, this is Paige with another movie review. This time we are doing The Avengers, which I have been totally psyched to do because this was a great movie. This was an awesome movie. It stars Robert Downey Jr. as Tony Stark slash Iron Man, Chris Evans as Steve Rogers slash Captain America, Mark Ruffalo as Bruce Banner slash The Hulk, Chris Hemsworth as Thor, Scarlett Johansson as Natasha Romanoff slash The Black Widow, Jeremy Renner as Agent Clint Barton slash Hawkeye, Samuel L. Jackson as Nick Fury, Tom Hiddleston as Loki, Clark, Clark Gregg, I cannot remember his name usually for the life of me, as Agent Phil Coulson, Stellan Skarsgård as Dr. Eric Selvig, and I think I've hit all of the high notes. Those are the most important people in the movie, at any rate. Of course, there is Tony Stark, Iron Man, Robert Downey Jr. You knew exactly what to expect from him, from his character, because there have been two previous Iron Man movies. And he delivers. He delivers very well. Gwyneth Paltrow has a basically a cameo as Pepper Potts. So, if you're looking for a lot of Tony Pepper action, you're going to have to wait for Iron Man 3. There is a little bit that, you know, plays faith to the Iron Man series in the beginning. But other than that, it's kind of... It's basically, it's not about Iron Man. It's about the Avengers. Captain America, a.k.a. Steve Rogers or whatever. Again, you kind of know what to expect from his character as there has been a previous Captain America movie. But there are some changes to his character because he is now literally a man 70 years out of his time. Picture 1943. They did not have cell phones. They did not have cable TV. They didn't really have cars like we do, even. They sure as hell didn't have cars that could self-park. This dude is suffering from the worst case of culture shock ever. And he manages to get that across. I was actually fairly impressed with that. He is moodier than he was as Captain America in the Captain America movie, which again is to be expected because everything he knows is just gone. Boom. He didn't just miss his date, he missed the last 70 years. And you can tell, you know, that he's a man out of his time when somebody makes a Wizard of Oz reference and he gets all excited because I got that. Yeah. Chris Hemsworth as Thor. Again, you kind of know what to expect from his character as there has been a Thor movie. He did manage to portray the changes in Thor's character because honestly, this dude has suffered some pretty hard blows in the last couple of years. And he's more thoughtful, more introspective, not nearly as arrogant, just as reckless. Still just goes charging in with the hammer. Which means they didn't do a complete rewrite of Thor, which is good, because that would have really sucked, actually. But he did a good job. He did as expected, I guess, which is awesome. It's what you want. Mark Ruffalo as Bruce Banner. If I just had the comparison of the Eric Bana Hulk movie that really, really, really sucked, I would have thought, oh my god, this dude was awesome! But then I saw The Incredible Hulk with Edward Norton. And while I still think, wow, he did really good, Edward Norton just had that little bit more something. He was just more likable. He came across as more human, I guess is the term. And some of that can be explained as, well, he's learned to control the Hulk, he has to hold himself at a distance, he's a little bit colder. They have taken the second Hulk movie, the Invincible Hulk. Um, or not, sorry, not Invincible Hulk, Incredible Hulk. <laughs> into account with this, they actually make a couple of references to that movie. There are no references to the first movie. Because where, it sucked. As I believe both uh, the Invincible, or the Incredible Hulk and uh, Avengers were supposed to totally ignore that movie. But the thing is, is that they didn't completely rewrite Hulk, but they actually did a, you know, they did do a little bit tweaking of the character and the way he acted. Well, because obviously they have to do that when there is a different actor involved. That is perfectly understandable. 
Anyway, moving on to get it out of the way. Jeremy Renner as Hawkeye. I think he did a good job. He was not in as much of the movie as I thought he was going to be. I mean, the dude has in like the top seven billing. I'm like, woo, he's got to be in most of the movie. He's really not. He's in a good portion of it and he does a great job. He really does. He manages to portray the points. He, I can't come right out and say what those points are because spoiler alert, but he manages to do the ships necessary in Hawkeye's character and portray them very well. And while I do not think that he is the dreamboat Callie does, I think he did a really good job. Scarlett Johansson as the Black Widow, Natasha Romanoff, another character you kind of know what to expect from her. She's the hard ass super spy chick. You see her in Iron Man 2. She's pretty much exactly the same. Her confrontation with Loki was very well done, well thought out, and she did great in that scene in particular. I thought she did great. Samuel L. Jackson as director Nick Fury. I really don't think anybody could have done Nick Fury as well as Samuel L. Jackson did. But then, you know, to me, Samuel L. Jackson really can do no wrong. He made the first two Star Wars prequels almost bearable. Almost. Just about. At least to me. Almost. I think he did a great job. He manages to be both kind of bullying in your face and sort of like sneaky, slithery, conniving, and yeah. He's very believable as the head director of a secret organization. Oh yeah, yeah. Ha, he did great. And then of course there's Clark Gregg as Agent Coulson. Again, no big changes in his character. You kind of know what to expect. You saw him in Iron Man, you saw him in Iron Man 2, you saw him in Thor. And yes, by the way, for those of you who do not catch this, Agent Borton is in Thor. He's not in very much of Thor, and he's uncredited, but he is in it. Watch for it. But Agent Coulson, again, I love the, the character of Phil Coulson. He is really good. They catch the dynamic between him and Tony Stark very, very well. And the, the dynamic between Coulson and Stark is basic tolerance, basically. It's like, I don't like you, but I put up with you because I have to. This is where my boss told me I had to be. <laughs> and that comes across very well. And again, I really like Coulson's character. So. And then, of course, saving the best in my mind for last. Not the best looking, because we all know who I think is the best looking. But the best characterization, the best portrayal, Loki. I love a good villain. A good villain equals a good story, and Loki is a good villain. Especially when, you know, the character, the people who are playing the heroes are actually able to play off that villain, that actor. Exactly. And again, they catch the dynamic between him and Thor. They, again, there's the confrontation between Loki and Agent Romanoff. There is a little bit between Director Fury and Loki. There's between Dr. Selvig and Loki, between Agent Barton and Loki. And they manage to play all of these characters off of each other. And the actor does an excellent job. I have never seen Tom Hiddleston in anything else to the best of my knowledge. But now that I have, if I see something else with him in it, I'm gonna go, hey, you know, that's the dude who plays Loki. He did a good job. He's a good actor. This will probably be pretty good. Or at least it's worth a decent look. Exactly. It's worth looking at. It's worth checking out. But I will rent. Because I'm not just going to grab because the last time I did that based on an actor, I got Kristen Stewart. <laughs> and no, I'm not going to let that go. That movie made me angry. Moving on. I love Loki because Loki has a good villain good at being bad and then you look at Loki in Thor and you look at Loki in the Avengers and it's just holy mother of god dude what happened to you you're broken your trip through the abyss messed you up for those of you who have seen Thor 
if you see Loki now, you will literally wonder, you know, what happened? Because he does take literally a trip down the darker side of his persona. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I really can't say anything else, anything that is running through my head right now because again, there are spoilers for the Avengers, there are spoilers for Thor, I have to be really careful. The cat just broke something. <laughs> That's staying in there. <laughs> um, anyway. Yes, Loki, awesome. And again, I have a thing for the villain. So, Charlize Theron, Donna Murphy from Tangled, and Tom Hiddleston from The Avengers can all get together and start like a villain's club. Or you know what? Get them all in a, into one movie. I would watch that just based on the cast. Yeah! And I'd rarely do that. Yeah. Yeah, because then you'd be like me and grab something with Kristen Stewart in it. I would have looked at the case first. Well, I thought maybe Twilight was a fluke. I thought I was giving her the benefit of a doubt. She can't suck in everything. Yes, she can. I loved this movie. I give this movie five stars. It is Joss Whedon writing. Come on. This is the dude who did Buffy. And those same little random out of the woodwork comedic moments that characterized Buffy that made Buffy a good show instead of just another time filler in primetime. Characterize the Avengers. Those little moments where, yo, hey, that could really happen. Or, oh my god, that's as funny as hell. Those kind of moments. And I really like that about a movie. It makes a movie more relatable. And honestly, let's face it, these characters in this movie, most of them aren't aren't the kind of people you can really relate to because you're not a billionaire super genius who builds a suit of armor in his garage or an Asgardian prince or any of these things. A super soldier from the 1940s. But these moments humanize them. They make the characters seem human, seem relatable, seem more like us. You know, hey, even superheroes have a bad day kind of thing. I guess if that made any sense at all. So, again, five stars. And that is pretty much all of my thoughts on The Avengers. I thought it was great. It is more than worth checking out. It was an excellent culmination of all of the Marvel movies to date, with the exception of Spider-Man, and you don't even want me to go there. I believe that our next movie review is going to be Thor, and it will not be nearly this long. I do believe, however, we have a television review coming up for The Walking Dead, which is an AMC original series starring Andrew Lincoln, is the only actor I can remember, honestly. But he's the main character, so that's what matters, right? Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed!